Um, it's a great question. Um, you probably need to ask a different writer um, because um, I personally am not an emotional person. Um, it's, it's a weird thing that I have. I have kind of the opposite of whatever, um, whatever it is that causes other people to have wild emotional variants. Um, my wife, when we were first dating, was like, I'm dating data. Um, <laughs> and it, it really is. Um, some people have, I have whatever the opposite of bipolar is, um, where you know, people are like, other people are like this, you know, in their emotional spectrum, and I'm like this. I basically feel the same every day. I don't have bad, uh, you know, depressed days. I don't feel depressed. Um, there are days I don't feel like working as much as others. Those are usually because I have a head cold or I have allergies or something. But um, I don't, I don't get, I don't, I, I've never been depressed. Um, it just doesn't happen to me. I've never been so excited that I, you know, scream or things like that. That doesn't happen to me either. Um, if people's emotional states are, you know, a zero is death to depression and a hundred is like the huge air, you know, bastion of excitement, um, I'm at a 70 always. And that's who I am. And so, how do you write through that? You need to talk to other people. Um, the other thing is, I haven't had huge tragedies in my life yet. I, I'm sure they will come. But, um, you know, huge tragedy for me is my editor doesn't like the book. Um, you know, that's, that's as bad as things get. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I've had grandmothers pass away, but in, you know, in her 90s. So, um, so come back to me you know, in 20 years when I've lost my parents, and we'll see. Uh, otherwise, go talk to other writers and see what they, they, they do. I don't really know if I have a, a suggestion for that. And how do you write such good emotional characters? Um, uh, lot, the same way that I write the fact that allomancy exists, or write being a 16-year-old girl when I've never been one. Um, <laughs> Being a writer is about observation, about psychology, and I can understand it, I feel, n not having felt it myself, because I can extrapolate you know, what it would be to feel like I do and extrapolate it uh, to, to other heights. Um, and you know, I, I can write, hopefully, an atheist who feels like an atheist, though I'm not. Um, and that's a, that's a skill of a writer. Um, but at the same time, if you write, some, read something like um, like Jancy writes, uh, I think that she does it better because she's been there, and I haven't. Uh, so, this is a skill of a writer, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, that's just how I am. The, and, and you know, I've I've met others who are like this. I think it's more of a guy thing um, because we don't have um, we don't have quite as many. Um, hormones changing our what's going on in our mix month by month, but you know my mom is actually a little bit more this way as well. So um, I don't know. I, I'm sure I'm not unique. I'm sure there are plenty. Of there, I'm sure there are others in this room that are like, yeah, that's kind of how I am too. But um, yeah, interviewing people helps a lot. Interviewing people with uh, with certain um, different emotional states. All right. Other questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's going to depend on your personal psychology. Carrots work w really well for me, um, meaning I've got to get this done. Um, I know I've got to get it done. Um, if I work on this for, you know, this much time and I get this much done, then I'll, you know, I'll go and um, buy myself a copy of Skyrim and I'll start playing. You know, something like that. Carrots actually are, are pretty good for me. Um, and so it depends. I mean, early in my career, it was less carrots and more the stick, meaning if I don't get this done, I'm going to end up having to do a real job. And <laughs> I've described it before that um, jokingly, I, I saw like some phantom cubicle chasing me through the streets. And it's like, I got to stay ahead of the cubicle. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I was passionate about writing. I still am. I love writing. I love that those moments when I'm in the book doing particularly the first draft and everything's coming together and I can't have those moments couldn't have those moments professionally unless I did this part and I didn't for many years um, and that's part of what took me 
uh, 13 books get published. Well. I, I didn't start doing this until later in my career. So you just have to figure out how, how you motivate yourself to do anything you don't like. How do you motivate yourself to do your home teaching or whatever it is, you know. Some people really like home teaching. I actually enjoy home teaching. But whatever it is that you don't like doing, um, how do you motivate yourself to do it? Uh, doing revisions is my least favorite thing in the entire world. There's nothing, I mean, I would, I would much rather be doing anything else um, that reasonably I could be doing. I'm sure I wouldn't like being tortured in North Korean prison more, but, um, you know, anything else <coughs> in my life I would rather be doing than that. Um, but it's part of the job. And as bad parts of a job go, it's not so bad at all because, you know, working for someone else, that would be even worse. Letting someone else, you know, um, the, the thing about writing, um, on this, the, one of the intangible benefits, so to speak, one of the things that we don't talk about a lot that I just absolutely love is that my success is directly tied to how good a job I do. Um, the only one determining my future is me. I'm not going to work really hard on a project coding, you know, and doing the best job of coding ever and then have the marketing team flub up so much that the product doesn't get released and I lose my job. Um, conversely, I'm not going to, you know, do that and do this wonderful job and then uh, have the, the project leader be praised and get a raise. Um, if I do a poor job with my writing, I will not make money because people won't buy my books. If I do a good job with writing, people will buy my books and I will continue to be able to do it. And that's a really liberating feeling. Um, it doesn't, it's not even a feeling you can have at the beginning of your career because before you become a name in the field, lots of things can mess up, you know, that aren't your fault. But once you hit my level, only I can mess up. Um, I'm not going to magically stop selling because they put a bad cover on my books. Whereas early on, that could be something that could mess up your, uh, mess up your career a little bit. Um, I'm not going to, you know, th those things aren't, aren't a consideration anymore. Um, I have enough of a, of, a, of a presence. And so that's really awesome. Um, you know, I, my bonuses, so to speak, there are no bonuses. Um, it is every person who buys a book, I get a cut of it. And so if lots of people are buying them, I make money. And, you know, that's not the primary reason to be a writer, but boy, it's nice. Oh, we'll go to you next. You're kind of hiding back there. She, she already had one, so we'll do her, and then we'll come over here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, was your wife a reader before? My wife was an English teacher, so oh, that yeah. That's yeah. That's and you know what? My wife, she, um, it's, she just does this instinctively. She gives rah-rah comments. She gives some feedback, but she mostly just rah-rahs. And I think that's a good place for a spouse to be. We've never talked about the fact that that's what she does, but she just naturally started doing that. Um, I don't think you want your spouse to be the one... Um, usually giving you the really harsh feedback and criticism. Um, so, so I'm glad that that's how she approaches it. 